Hello goons and gals, it is Doug here with the Born a Goon channel. In today's video, I seek to accomplish a specific goal, to entertain, to educate, and to enlighten you on a specific motorsport topic. Now the topic we have chose for today will be the most anticipated dual sport motorcycles of 2023. So the question, is there anything coming out in dual sport land in 2023 that's compelling enough for the average dual sport rider to finally give up that 17 year old DRZ, KLX, XR, XL and trade it in on a brand new dual sport? Probably not. And I understand because this is very difficult. Those motorcycles I just mentioned are iconic beasts, legendary bikes, might I say, that could run off of cooking oil and vegetable broth if necessary. These are motorcycles that only need maintain once every 17 years cicada emergence. So it's very difficult to let something like that go, but we're gonna try. <laughs> Manufacturers have been using the term dual sport now for well over 20 years. And honestly, I don't think any of us really know exactly what that means. It's quite a vague and broad category. Wikipedia says that a dual sport motorcycle is a type of street legal bike that's designed for both on and off road use that comes with street legal equipment on it, like lights, speedometers, mirror, horn, license plates, and even a muffler. So it can be used on the streets. Now, even with that definition, Wikipedia says they need additional clarification to make sure that it's legit. But how about this? Let's go with that definition. Dual sport motorcycles that are 50 states street legal, out of the box, off the showroom floor, with no additional modifications needed for street legality. Bikes with lights, speedometers, mirrors, horns, and yes, mufflers. So this means we'll have to leave out other models from some of the manufacturers I mentioned today that have lights and license plate holders on them, but they still require additional modifications to become street legal. Now I will say even with the stringent criteria and excessive caveats I have set forth in the attempts to narrow down this list for the sake of time, there are still a lot of dual sport motorcycles out there and I cannot comment on every make and model that's available. But this is why we have a comment section, so make sure you sound off if there's anything I left out that you'd like to discuss. So what we will do is break down some of the best models that are available in three different types of dual sport categories. And those categories will be premium, budget, and unique. We'll start out with a premium category, and these are just pretty much dirt bikes that have license plates on them, the bare minimum for legality. They are the lightest, the fastest, and the most intense dual sports that are sold today, and they're also the most expensive because they include the latest technology. A premium dual sport motorcycle will set you back anywhere from 10,000 United States dollars on the low end to as much as $14,000 on the high end. And this category is pretty much dominated by European manufacturers, most specifically KTM and its affiliated brands like Husqvarna and now Gas Gas. At the top of the food chain for all dual sports has to be the KTM 690 Enduro R, which is also the Husqvarna 701 and the Gas Gas 700. Now, I think we're going to see the Gas Gas 700 in North America for 2023, but I'm unsure of that right now. KTM has made some significant tweaks to the 690 Enduro R, or at least they are claiming that they have done so. But based on some of the recent pictures that I have seen, there's not enough there by the naked eye to really distinguish that model between the prior years. Now, I will admit that the 690 and the 701 pushed that dual sport moniker envelope to the max with both horsepower and weight, and could even be classified as just a very small adventure bike, depending on which way you look at it. It's a one-of-a-kind motorcycle that doesn't have any direct competitors. You have a 75 horsepower single cylinder engine and a 350 to 370 pound package and that's a very big powerful dual sport it's like the no limits poker table in vegas it's for the big boys and girls and while that power is handy on the road off of the road 75 horsepower is a whole lot now that obviously can be manageable with today's electronics but not every rider can get the most out of that horsepower and if you're someone who likes to ride technical trails, you may need to eat an extra serving of meat and mashed potatoes to throw around that extra weight. Nonetheless, this is a beast of a motorcycle that stands alone in its own universe. If you're not into the big behemoth super powerful dual sports scene, KTM also has smaller displacement street legal bikes available with their EXCF line. 
that feature the 500 EXCF and the 500 EXCF six days, which is a more premium version of an already premium bike. The KTM is probably the most popular motorcycle for the aggressive former motocrosser, the racers, and the riders who really take their dual sporting seriously. It's about as aggressive as you can get with a license plate on it. KTM also offers a smaller displacement 350 EXCF for those riders that are looking for a smoother, less aggressive engine hit. But as the saying goes, although she be small, she be fierce. The 350 still puts out close to 50 horsepower. KTM's sister brand Husqvarna has an FE line that is street legal that's very close to the KTM with a few minute differences. Husqvarna has the FE501 that's very close to the 500 EXCF. They have a 350 just like the 350 EXCF, but the Husqvarna does have a 450cc model if that's a specific displacement that you happen to be looking for. Now another European brand that's gaining steam is Italian manufacturer Beta. They have an RRS line of street legal dual sports with the most versatile engine displacement sizes available. They sell this bike in a 350, a 390, a 430, and a 500. So whatever power delivery and CC size that you're after, Beta seems to have you covered. Although a much smaller company compared to KTM and Husqvarna, Beta has been making motorcycles since 1905, and they're famously known for their trials motorcycles and have been used by world champions such as Jordi Torres, Dougie Lampkin, and Albert Cabinstani. Beta used KTM engines in their enduro motorcycles from 2005 up to 2010 before building their own in-house engines. And from the riders I have spoke to in the forums that I have visited, People who own Betas seem to really love them and they claim that they have bomb-proof reliability. Now I will say that out of all the dual sports I will be featuring today, I absolutely love the look of this bike. The collar schemes, the fit and finish, the symmetrical lines, it's almost too nice looking to ride off-road. Almost. You also have the infamous Honda CRF 450 RL, which I own this bike. So if any of you ever want any information about it, feel free to go back and look at some of the videos that I have done on this motorcycle. And all I can say about my personal ownership experience, it's very Honda. It's not the fastest, it's not the most radical, it's definitely overbuilt, and it's a lot heavier than other dual sports, but it's a Honda. And once you sort out the Honda's problems that are well documented by now, it is a phenomenal and reliable motorcycle. It is a few thousand dollars less than the KTM, Husqvarna, and the Beta, but you will need that extra few thousand dollars of savings to get the Honda up to snuff with the other bikes that are mentioned. And if you want to own this bike, plan on putting another $2,000 in it just to get it to run to its fullest potential. You also have the SWM500. This bike is based off the old Husqvarna TE510, so it has a really effective chassis. Now SWM isn't trying to compete head to head with the big boys like Honda or KTM. Their goal is to offer you a premium motorcycle at a budget price. And the SWM500 starts out at around $8,700. And I have to say that's a great deal under the circumstances for this motorcycle. You may not dazzle your friends on the Orange Brigade, but you will have an extra $4,000 in your bank account, and that's not a bad thing. I have heard some reports that the SWM500 is not street legal in all 50 states. However, I was not able to verify any of that. Still, the SWM500 is a whole lot of bike for a very little cost. And if you're on a tight budget where every dollar matters and you're looking to get your foot in the door with a competent premium dual sport bike, take a look at the SWM500. Another motorcycle to put on your radar here is the all new Bimoto BX450. Now at the time of doing this video, I have no idea if and when we're going to see this bike in North America. I don't know what the price is or how many of these motorcycles may enter production. But the Bimoto BX450 is just a Kawasaki KX450 in disguise. And that's not a bad thing. So I guess I would say thank you very much Bimoto for putting this bike together making something like this available and seeing this project through. And then I'd like to say WTF to you, Kawasaki. Like, why aren't you making this bike? I'm just asking for a friend. 
The sad part of this list is that the Japanese manufacturers are all but absent from premium dual sports. And I'm sure this is political. I mean, it takes gobs of cash to build a single cylinder, high performance dirt bike engine that can pass stringent EPA and Euro emission standards. So outside of the Honda, the Japanese manufacturers are just not putting forth a real effort in this space. Now, another reason for the European manufacturer dominance in this area is because European manufacturers are much smaller in size compared to the Japanese manufacturers. So they have far less government red tape to adhere to, and somehow they have found a way to build premium dual sports and slide them past the bureaucrats. So fair play to them. Now, there are Japanese manufacturers that have aggressive dual sports or cross-country models, if that's what you'd like to call them. Beginning with Yamaha, they have a WR250 and a 450 version. Kawasaki also has a 250X and a 450X cross-country version. But these bikes are not 50 state street legal. But if you have found a way to work around your local bureaucrats in your state and get these bikes licensed, well, fair play to you because I certainly would consider them if I could do it myself. So now let's take a look at some budget dual sports. Now these are some of the most iconic and popular motorcycles in this segment. They're very popular because they are cheap to buy in terms of motorcycles and they're simplistic in their design, which means there's far less on the bike to break and they're practically maintenance free. Now most of the budget motorcycles that you will see out there will have smaller engine displacements like 400 cc's or less and they deliver far less power. Now that makes them non-intimidating for the newer rider, but it also makes it a very perfect match for the experienced rider because they can just literally wring the neck out of that motorcycles, making them an absolute blast to ride. Budget dual sport motorcycles will run you anywhere from 4,000 United States dollars on the low end to as much as six and a half thousand dollars to the high end. Unlike the premium category that is dominated by European manufacturers, the script is completely flipped here. Most of these motorcycles are all from Japanese manufacturers with almost little to no European participation. Again, I'm sure this is political because the budget motorcycles have design elements that are grandfathered in. And if a manufacturer were to update them, they would have to repass emissions and that could cost them several millions of dollars and probably isn't worth the cost. And that's why many of these bikes in this category have been unchanged. However, that's not the case for all of them. And we'll start out with one of the newer models and one of the most popular in this category, the Honda CRF 300L and 300L Rally. Honda's updated the 300L for 2023. And right now, I don't know if it was just with a spray can or there's other elements that are involved. And I have to say, I'm not too keen on the gray look. To me, Honda should be red, but that's just a personal preference. You let me know what you think. It does appear that the 300L Rally will remain unchanged changed for 2023. In my opinion, one of the cool things about the CRF 300L and 300L Rally outside of Honda's legendary reliability is that these bikes look a lot bigger, meaner, and stronger than they really are. When you ride many budget dual sports, you feel like an elephant on a tricycle. But the Honda doesn't feel that way. The cockpit is roomy, the bike feels bigger than it is, so if you're a taller rider, keep that in mind. The Honda might be a good selection for you. Honda also still offers the ancient and prehistoric XR650L, which hasn't been updated since Achy Breaky Heart. But if you're looking for a good, reliable dual sport that you can pass to your children, that they can pass to their children, and then on to their children, and then their children, and the children after that's children, then perhaps the Honda XR650L is a good choice for you. Now we'll move on to Kawasaki that has a KLX 230 and a KLX 300 that's on par with the Honda 300L series. And Honda and Kawasaki are probably the best budget dual sports in the 300cc category. At least they've put some money and development into these motorcycles and kept them somewhat up to date. The KLX 300 is a pretty capable bike and it's probably better off-road than the Honda CRF 300L. And for a starting price at around 5,700 United States dollars, it's really hard to beat that type of a motorcycle and get that much value out of anything these days. Kawasaki is also home to the legendary, the iconic, the paterfamilias of dual sport motorcycles, the KLX 650. Now this could be classified by many riders as an adventure bike, but look, 
No list can be a true list if this bike is not on it. The Kawasaki KLX650 is so popular, if I don't mention it in this list, the motorcycling community will tar and feather me in public. So here it is. The all-time greatest apocalyptic mule bike ever made. And I have nothing else to say about it but that. Now, Yamaha Hall has a few budget dual sports that they offer in the XT250 and the TW200. And this TW200 kind of reminds me of my old 1985 BW Yamaha Hall. My brother and I would ride this bike around in the snow and tow each other in our sleds. I mean, that bike just went anywhere and did anything that you ever ask of it. In fact, it was one of the coolest motorcycles that I've ever had. Other than that, Yamaha hasn't really put forth an effort or any kind of research and development into the budget dual sport category. And while Yamaha is a great motorcycling brand, when it comes down to it, I can't really think of the reason to go with either one of these bikes other than for novelty purposes. Because for the same amount of money, you could end up with a Honda CRF 300 or the KLX 300. And in my opinion, those are much better motorcycles over much different types of terrain conditions. And it would seem like those are much better choices. Now, if we move on to Suzuki here for a minute, how about we talk about yet another iconic, super legendary up into KLX 650 status and talk about the Suzuki DR650S. So much like the KLX 650, if I don't mention this bike in this list, you will tar and feather me and perhaps YouTube will take my channel down and ban me forever. It's that important. The DR650 is so popular that every single time I do a dual sport video, or pretty much any time I do a motorcycling video at all, somebody is down in the comments section writing a 16 paragraph essay about some trip or story or adventure that their DR650 has gotten them into. And while I have not mentioned any specs of the Suzuki, or am I going to, the sheer fact that I have yet to find a single person roaming this planet that hates this motorcycle, much less has anything bad to say about it, should answer any question that you ever needed to know about a legendary bike. Now underneath of that, Suzuki does have a DRZ400, which is a little bit more up to date, but that's not saying much. The DRZ400 is also a very iconic bike, although not quite in the category of the KLX or the DR650, but still, it's a great quality motorcycle that should last you a few centuries and people really love these Suzukis. Even though many of the budget dual sport bikes that I have mentioned on this list are outdated, they are very lovable. They're so lovable that if you've been riding dual sport for any length of time, you've either owned one of these bikes or you know somebody who does and they probably still have it. And there are countless stories and adventures and for the price that you pay for them and the thrills and the adventure that you get from them, they simply cannot be beat. So if you're looking for the cheapest, the lowest maintenance, always starts, no frills bike, look no further than picking up a great budget dual sport. Now let's move on and talk about some unique dual sports. These are bikes that come from smaller manufacturers who produce these bikes in limited numbers. And because of that, these bikes are often hand built and customized. And one of the most radical dual sport motorcycles or just motorcycles period has to be this AJP PR7. It's a 600cc single cylinder motorcycle that's made in Portugal. And you could make the case that this is more of an adventure oriented motorcycle with its rally design, but it's quite the capable dual sport. The PR7 is highly coveted and it's on just about every moto enthusiast want list for its awesome looks and unicorn genetics. And as you can tell, this bike is very well put together and at only 11,500 United States dollars, it's not ridiculously overpriced for what you're getting. And that's well within line of a KTM or a Husqvarna. Now, long-term tests of the AJP haven't revealed any reliability issues. The biggest drawback obviously is getting your hands on one of these bikes as they sell out fast. AJP also sells a series of enduro motorcycles, but as to 50 state street legality qualifications, I don't know. You also have a lot of hype surrounding this Excelle ZF450LS rally. And as I go through this, I'm going to do my best to be accurate with my pronunciation, which is really impossible. Now this bike apparently is a clone 
of the Kolove 450, which was a Chinese machine that has competed in Dakar. And again, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Now, the Kolove used a Yamaha engine in it, but this XLA 450 Rally, which is supposed to be a street legal version, is gonna have a Lonkin built 449cc single. Now, I know absolutely nothing about Lonkin motors, and I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right, so please correct me if I'm not. So I don't have any idea if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I do like the radical look of this motorcycle and I like the direction in which it's going in. And I really like the way it kinda has that cool looking Africa twin front. I mean, it certainly checks all the boxes on that Moto Unicorn list that we've been looking for. Now as to when or if we get this bike and what the final model might be like remains to be seen. Also, I have a feeling as cool as this bike is, it's major drawback is gonna be the fact that it is built in China. Now that doesn't bother me at all, but I know it does bother a lot of other riders. And the cheaply produced dual sports in the box from Amazon hasn't done anything to add any credibility to that. However, many Chinese manufacturers have recently stepped up their game and built some quality motorcycles at a really great price. Two that come to mind is something like CF Moto and Kayo. The build quality and the components on those bikes don't look cheap. And if you slapped a KTM sticker on the side of one of those bikes, many people wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Now I wanna briefly chat about a couple models here just to cover my basis. And we'll start with the Fantic 450. A lot of talk about this motorcycle, but as of now, I don't think we're going to see this bike in 2023 here stateside. Just keep your eyes open for it and we'll continue to update the progress of this motorcycle. Sherco is supposed to be producing a 450 rally, but as of now, I've seen nothing but concept drawings, so keep your eyes out for that one. And of course, Triumph, but I don't think we're gonna see their Enduro versions until 2024. You have a couple of weird motorcycles out there off the beaten path, like the Cristini all-wheel drive 450 Explorer. Don't even know if it's worth mentioning an all-wheel drive bike. Do we even need something like that? But there it is. And also this 2023 Vent X Rude. I'm guessing Rude means the styling of this bike because I don't know what it is. It's sort of like a Triumph, a Ducati, and a Yamaha got together for an orgy and had a child. I, I just don't know what to make of this bike. Anyway, goons and gals, that's going to do it for today's video. And I hope you feel that I put forth a solid effort in this list today and you are very pleased with the results. As always, I am sure I left something out. So be sure to put down your suggestions and your favorite dual sports that you're looking forward to in the comments section. And that's it. I think I've said enough.